is Morgan J. Ingram here with another Chronicle on the SDR Chronicles, being, bringing special guests with sales development experience so that you guys can get the knowledge and insights for your sales development careers um, in there going forward. So without any further introduction, without any further ado, I got Terrence here. I also got Mark Skinner here. Um, they're going to lay down some knowledge on sales development, sales development manager and SDR at Vidyard. And they're going to talk about video today how that helps with SQOs, SQLs, and why it's super important to focus on video right now. So I'm gonna let them go in a further introduction and then we're gonna hop in the topic of the day. Great, what's up everyone? My name is Terrence, like Morgan. Thanks Morgan for the introduction. I am a sales development manager here at Vidyard. Uh, I've been with the company for about two and a half years now. I uh, started off as an SDR, just like a lot of the audience and moved my way into a, a manager role uh, after, uh, after kind of earning my stripes there. Um, and I'll let Mark introduce himself. Yeah, hey guys, um, my name is Mark. I am approaching my one year here at Vidyard. I started off as what we call an SDR, which is an inbound rep, and then quickly moved into a BDR, which for us is an outbound role, and I focus primarily on EMEA, which is Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, so I'm happy to talk about all the process that we do here, and looking forward to this conversation. Awesome. So let's let's jump into the first question that everyone's probably gonna ask from the get go. Why should I do video? Why why should I be um, spending my time making videos? Why is that important? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. So we recently released the benchmark report on video, and one of the stats we had compiled and through through all our research and all the stuff that we were able to pull from our database of uh, all our customer content. Um, was like pretty much people want to watch content. People want to be consuming video online. Like this is a video right here. People are spending time on YouTube watching this. Um, I think the stat is 20 billion videos are actually being viewed online every single day. Uh, so people in their consumer lives, they're using, they're, they're consuming video. They want to be engaging with that content medium. And it's not any different in the B2B world when you're selling, right? So communicate with your prospective customers in a content medium that they want to be communicated in and they've shown time and time again in their own personal lives that they want to watch video content so why doesn't that translate why not translate that over into the b2b world yeah yeah and just to add on to that for the process for a lot of the questions that we get is video seems hard um it seems like it takes a lot of time but in reality it's as simple as making this video right now just communicating to whoever you're looking at or trying to reach out to and seeing why uh, you're reaching out to them, provide as much value as you possibly can, as well as you put a face to a name, which is a fantastic way to actually showcase that you're a human, you're not a robot. As many emails come across these days are super robotic, but now you're actually able to put a little personality and spin on it and be more engaging and then understand and have a conversation from there. Yeah, and I, and I definitely agree with what you guys are saying. I think it does bring the humanity. Um, I think video is the best way to connect with someone because you guys, you can see that real-time connection. You can actually see the passion or the energy of what they're talking about. Um, so with that, what do you, what are you telling people that are afraid of video, right? They're like, oh, I got to get like my hair right or like, you know, I got to look nice. Like, what are you telling these people who have these objections to even start doing videos in the first place? Man, that's a really good question. Like. <laughs> We were recently at a conference and we were talking about the use of video in sales. And I actually got a lot more objections than I thought. Like we live and breathe video here um, and I haven't had too much of a chance to talk to customers. So one objection that really came up was like this idea that video was challenging, video was hard. Like you said, I need to get my hair right. I'm not good on camera. I'm a little bit awkward. And usually what I asked the person was, think back to your first cold call. Was your first cold call easy? And the answer is usually no, my first cold call wasn't easy. It's the same Absolutely thing, not. right? Like I still get nervous whenever I make a cold call. If I'm doing a blitz with a rep here, like there's still that slight jitter in my stomach before I make that dial. But with practice and with, you know, dedication to, to uh, improving myself and improving like our, our trade, I got better at it. And it's the same thing with video. Like video is going to be challenging. You're going to get on the camera for the first time ever and you're going to feel awkward. You're just going to feel uncomfortable. You're not going to think you know the words to say. But as you practice and you get into a good coaching cadence with your manager or a good coaching cadence with your peers, you're quickly going to improve. Like our team was probably you know, falling on our face for the first couple of weeks doing this and we're a video company, right? And after two weeks of just like dedication to figuring this out, we're now able to sound these videos off with pretty much no... <laughs> No trouble at all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just to add on to that as well. So 
I probably make at least 20 videos per day. And then depending on how many people are reaching out to, it could be even more. So after a while, it literally just becomes a muscle of memory and you understand why you're reaching out to them. You do your research and then you're able to put those lines together, put some smile and pizzazz into it if you like. And then <laughs> uh, you also get feedback. So uh, Terrence is actually my manager here uh, for the first few weeks, as you mentioned, I actually had videos that were over a minute long. And then we noticed that people were kind of trailing off on that. So then we retouched it and reframed it. And same thing with call coaching. You're able to coach on those videos so you can improve on your messaging. And that really helps a lot. Yeah. And I, and I love the point uh, that Terrence, you made up of like, hey, like it's like a cold call. I like, just get involved. I tell people that all the time, like, hey, look, like it, it literally is just like with anything. It's like when you drive, when you ask that girl, that guy out, like, you gotta do it, you're not gonna get over it unless you do it that one time. And then it becomes just something that is a natural habit. So I agree with you on that. And Mark, I actually kinda wanna touch on the duration, cause I know we've actually gone back and forth on this. What is an optimal time for how long you should actually make a video? Cause I feel like some people are like, I should make a video for five minutes, and then I'm like, this isn't like a documentary. So it's like, what's, what's the <laughs> optimal time for someone to actually make a video so they can connect with the prospect? For sure. So there's a few durations that I've noticed personally across the team of how effective it's been. So essentially the first touch or the first video that you send out, uh, we do the personal selfie videos. So I'll have a whiteboard and say, hi, Morgan, and then say why I'm reaching out to you. And these are typically 30 to 45 seconds. Anything over that uh, will typically fall off and you'll notice a drop off rate. So after those initial videos and they watch and engage with you, then I follow up with a micro demo of saying why and how this video could help you and your company and your role. And since they're already engaged, I typically make these about two minutes long, just walking through um, our site, um, their LinkedIn profile, and explaining why. So those, I find once you have the initial engagement, which is 30 to 45 seconds, then you can uh, kind of tease them with a little teaser of your own in the video uh, sense as well. Cool. And you, and you found out that this, the shorter, the better at the end of the day. Yeah. As long as you can get your message across because everyone has a tension span of a goldfish nowadays. So Snapchat is like 10 seconds long. Of a video. Yeah. Some people even like click through super quick. So as long as you can convey your message in about 30 to 45 seconds, that seems to be the multiple odd duration. Yeah. And, and this is of course the question for both of you, but this is two different uh, perspectives. So Terrence, what are you telling your reps um, to do before they do a video? And then Mark, I know you kind of talked about your process, but tell people a little bit more on how you prepare for videos if you can't find research and do you just keep it generic or do you actually take a deeper dive? Yeah. So I think from a, in terms of like a, a prep standpoint before you hit record, it's the same stuff you need to prep before you make that dial or before you send that email, right? You need to be well researched and have an understanding of who you're reaching out to and why why them, why us, why now, right? If as long as you have that message down on lock and that you've internalized it, <clears throat> when you get on camera, you're gonna be able to say it out loud. And I think if you don't have that compelling reason as to why you're reaching out, it's the exact same thing as making a dial but not earning the right to make that dial. If you're calling someone you don't know why you're calling them, then don't call them at all, right? You're wasting their time. So that's the one thing from a messaging standpoint. But one thing that the other thing that people are not really prepared for when they first dive into video are little things like lighting. You want to be like not backlit. Uh, you want to be smiling. You want to have good body language. You're adding this entirely different element into inside sales, right? Inside sales traditionally has been hide behind the phone, hide behind the emails. You can have your feet up on the desk making dials and no one's going to know. But now when you're turning on the camera, you need to stand up straight. You need to like, you know, put your shoulders back and you have a big smile on your face. You don't want to be looking at yourself. You want to be looking slightly above the camera. Little things like that are going to make a huge difference to how people perceive you when they receive that video. And like Mark said, 40 seconds is an optimal length, right? But if you're a charismatic and you have, um, you're able to draw people in with like a really well recorded video. And I'm not saying like big production quality with like a DSLR, like <laughs> studio. Like if you, if you're engaging, people will be able to sit down and actually listen to what you have to say. Um, and that takes a lot of practice. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess to add on to the prepping and making the video. So in terms of generic, so obviously you have to do a lot of research. If you're not able to find that much research on a individual's LinkedIn, which tends to be the case, I've gotten it before where it's just the title. So for us, we have 
a bunch of different uh, personas that we reach out to. So I know based on the persona and based on the role and their company, maybe I'll bring up a topic about what just happened in a, at their company, maybe they just received a new round of funding. So I can bring that up. And based on that, if you're a manager, you're always looking to increase your conversions. So I'll bring up topics that will um, inspire them to re reply to me. So it doesn't have to be super personal. Like, Hey, like I know like you like, like the Atlanta Falcons. I'm not going to bring, like, I don't have to bring that up. I don't have to go into too much depth. I just have to understand why I'm reaching out to you, what value I can provide and do that anytime I've been. It's the fine balance between like personal and relevant, right? Like yeah. being personal is not enough. You have to be relevant and usually we'll fall back to being relevant rather than, you know, some overly personal, personal line. Yeah. Like, you know, I, great, great that you have puppies. Let's talk about this. And it's like, wait, what? It's, yeah. not, it's not relevant at all. It's not related. <laughs> that <Right>. makes sense. <laughs> and so you, I know that, um, you know, I personally use, um, viewed it. And you know, I love it. It's definitely helped me a lot in my SDR career and it's definitely helping my reps. Uh, so this is a question that I have within process. You know, we, we are comfortable now. I'm, I'm on video, I'm excited. How do you determine whether or not to use the screen share option on Butit? And then how do you determine whether or not to whether just use the cam only option in Butit? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, in our cadence specifically, we always start with cam first. Um, so for people who haven't seen these videos, and maybe we can link an example, um, we hold up a whiteboard with the person's name on it, and that becomes a thumbnail for the video. So if you see your name on a whiteboard, you're much more likely to click play. We always put our best foot forward and start camp first because we think it's more personable, like they can see that we're human, and we can talk to them like, like a person. And um, that's typically well, that's typically our, our first step in our cadence. Down the road, we will always do an account-based video. So what I mean by an account-based video, so probably on our third email touch, we're gonna send them a video that we made specifically for the account as a whole. It's not even gonna be personalized to the person, and that's gonna be a screen share. And that's really about walking them through our rationale for why you know their company should be working with our company. So it could be going through their website, it could be going through recent news articles, it could be going through, um, uh, content that they've that they've created that might be you know relevant to be hosted on video or whatever that might be and the good thing about that is when you when you're in your account planning stages and you create that account based video at least you have in the back of your the back of your pocket for like the five to ten contacts that you're likely prospecting within that within that account so to answer your question like you pretty much want to do both for all your contacts but we usually start with cam first and then move into screen capture yeah. cool there? not really you Pretty much, <laughs> <laughs> you just took it away. <laughs> cool. And so, you know, we have everything. We have figured out how to use video. We have the tools. We have the options. Now, let's talk about how, how is this helping your pipeline. So, how is this helping actually increase SQOs and SQLs for your business? And how can it help other uh, sales organizations that are like, I want to do video, but I don't know what that means. <laughs> I, I think the big thing with video. So when we're when we're in active deal cycle. So just as a little bit of context for everyone watching, Viewed is a is a hundred percent free tool. So we're not we're not selling Viewed uh, right now, but we're selling a enterprise version of that uh, of that tool. And when we're in active deal cycle, the big thing people want to know is like, you know, what's your what's your increase to reply rates? You know, how many. Uh, how many, what, what is your deliverability? How many open rates are you getting on, on these video emails? And the big thing is, is that, yes, that has increased over time, but what we really found with video and where it's helping us is in two, is twofold. One, people are responding to that first email at a much higher rate than they were, but with positive responses. So the sentiment has been positive. And what I mean by positive is not necessarily saying, yes, I want to talk to Vidyard, or yes, like this is the right product for me, but it's, hey, thank you so much for creating this video yes, I'm interested, or, hey, thank you so much for creating this video. I'm not interested, but I appreciate the time that you took to personalize this email. I've never received anything like this before. So that's one thing. And what that, when, you look, when you look at that, you're thinking about how much time are you saving when you get a response on that first email, right? The big thing in sales development we talk about is you want to get to yes, no, or maybe as quickly as possible because you want right. to save yourself time. And if you, can get, if you can get people responding on that first email, you're now saving you know, 10 to 12 touches over the next 15 business days that you don't have to worry about anymore. And you can start the conversation, handle the objections, whatever that might be. So that's the first thing that it's, uh, that it's been uh, really helping us with. And the second thing is, is that when we, it is a conversation starter, like you said, and, the, and what we find is 
because you know we're so early in the in the market with this this whole video prospecting thing people are more willing to jump on a call or um, are more willing to receive more information from us because they just haven't seen it before and when we get on that call uh, what's great is we can also follow up with video and we have it we have the ability for them to share it across their company uh, because it's, it's video is very easy to share so from a pipeline generation standpoint pretty much every single one of our deals has been influenced by video. I don't. I can't think of a single like opportunity in the last like three four months that they it did not start off with a video conversation. But obviously we're a bit biased there because we're sending a lot of video out. Of course. In comparison to like the previous, like before we used video, um, what we what we did find was we were still receiving the classic like unsubscribe, take me off your list, not interested, stop emailing me. But that really hasn't really come up very often anymore. No, like even from my perspective too. So I guess I'm more in the nitty gritty in the trenches. So having the capabilities to be more personalized and sending it out, like I love, like every time we get a response, I'm always excited. Like if, if someone pops up in my email, I'm like, oh, like they usually will respond positively, and they're usually shocked too. Um, for example, like even with the whiteboard video, I, I had Hi Tom. And this individual thought it was generic because he thought his name was very generic right and he, I, I brought up the fact that he went he's in Rotterdam in the Netherlands I actually went to the school same school I brought that up and he was a big Marketo user and he's like wow like, you actually made that for me I'm like exactly that's the whole point and this is how <laughs> for every single individual and as soon as they watch it they're like wow this is yeah I want to have a conversation or no this is a lot of, this is really cool but maybe in a few months time just love to follow up then because of XYZ yeah and, that, and, that, and I think that's really what it does. It allows you to get to the no, the maybe yes, because it's like, this is different, so I'm going to respond to it. It would almost be like, why would I not respond to it? You know. And uh, so how do you deal with, and this, this, is, this is another question that, how do you deal with people who take the tool and they're like, this is awesome, um, and then they don't make it personalized. They just make everything generic. <clears throat> Yeah, so that was a big thing that came up when I was talking to like you know SDRs that hadn't used video in the past. They're like they're trying to think of a way to, you know, I don't want to create a video every single time because it takes a lot of time, right? Or I don't want to create a video because they might not watch it. Um, so how can I use it to create like a generic video and then blast that out to all my prospects and kind of get the same point across? Like there are some, you know, there are there are some scenarios where that might make sense. Create a generic video and use it as part of your cadence. Maybe as a no ask touch, you're sharing an article and it doesn't need to necessarily be personalized for the recipient. But you're really taken away from the whole point of sales development at that point, right? Like anybody can, you're like as a sales development rep, anything as a sales development professionals, we need to think about you know elevating our our trade to the next level. Like anybody can hit send on a templated email. Anyone can hit send on a templated video. But what's really going to set you apart from the rest is it's taking that 20 to 30 seconds to actually create that content. And that's all really how long it takes, right? People who are you know, nervous about diving into video, they don't want to create uh, personalized content every single time. Usually what I say to them is like, how long does it take you to make a cold call, right? Just get through the dial trees, you know, dial by name, waiting, letting it ring you know, four, five, six times before you get the voicemail, leaving the voicemail, screwing up, re-recording the voicemail, yeah. and then getting on to the next call. That's 30 to 40 seconds already, right? So it's really not going to be adding much to your process. And we really want to stress that it is, it is going to be worth your while to customize each video. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, that just, it just makes sense on that end. And then um, with the, let's go back to kind of the SQOs, SQLs. When you make these and you send them off to the account executive, do you find, and we talked about this a little bit, but do you find that these calls actually are, um, the prospect's actually more excited to hop on the call and it's not like, oh, wait, I have no idea why I'm on this call today? Yeah, so for, it, it's great. So when you send out the videos and you have that first initial conversation, um, they usually talk about it, you find out their pains, gains, how you, how you can help, and based on your alignment, after sending it to an account executive or a specialist, uh, what we do is actually send over uh, information about what we talked about and then we usually send collateral as well. So this is when I'll personally go through a micro demo and just say, hey Morgan, glad we're able to talk today. This is what we discussed and this is like a little preview of what our specialists will be talking about with you um, in two days time. 
Uh, is there anything I missed? Happy to send over more micro demos or anything else. Let me know. And then this has actually increased our, or decreased rather the drop off rates of like no shows. So pretty much everyone that I send this email to with videos in it, and I can tell when they watch it, this goes right to our account executive and then uh, he or she will know what they've watched, what they're interested in. So then they can better tailor their demo or their conversation as well. And then, so before the demo happens, you know, cause I, I always send an email like, Hey, like the demo is tomorrow. Do you send a follow up? You send like a before email before they hop on the demo to help with the no show or like once you set that meeting, it's like, okay, like I sent the video, I did my job. It's usually, it's usually after. So after the initial conversation, say okay. the demo was the next day, I'll be like, Hey, Maureen, like great chatting uh, with you this morning. Here's what we discussed looking forward or Jamie's really looking forward to talking with you tomorrow. Let me know if you have any questions beforehand. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Cause I mean, that's, that's huge, right? Cause you know, you don't, you want you, it's great to set the meeting, but if they don't show up, it's like, wait, what's going on? Right. It's like, it's like, it's like getting a day and like, cool. And then they don't show up. It's like, it doesn't matter. Right. So it's like, you gotta be able to help those people show up. And so, you know, when, and then let's talk about, you know, when it, when it does accelerate that pipeline, do you find at the end of the deal that that customer actually becomes more of an advocate because you did video? It's this, uh, it's this idea that we have here called winning with experience, right? Like we want to, and everything that we're doing, we want to give the best possible experience, whether it's with existing customers, with prospective customers, with you people that are not the right fit. We still want to give them the best possible experience because we know that they will become advocates. And I do feel like video is enabling us to connect with people quicker than we were before because now they can see like, like, they can see our culture, they can see what we're all about, what our team's all about, and, uh, and get pretty psyched up about what we're doing here at Vidyard. Um, it's, it's hard to measure though, like it's really hard to measure whether or not that video itself was the reason why our customer is now more of an advocate. I do find that people that do try using video in sales at the moment, they get become pretty hyped about it. Like I saw you share a couple of your, your videos and it seems like it's something that Terminus is pretty, pretty psyched about, but um, yeah, like I, I don't know, I don't know if that, if, if they can directly attribute uh, videos to customer advocacy, I, I think I'd like to think yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, when I, when, when someone's, when they, uh, when someone said it to me, I was like, what in the world? Like I was so fired up. Cause like, I already like video. So I was like, I can just send videos to prospects all day long. Like, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Um, but it's different, right? Cause it's like, why is this guy in the room for three hours making videos? Um, but then it all changes when people see results. Right. So that's like the biggest thing. Yeah. And so, yeah, and, I, and just kind of as we get to last questions here, um, one of the questions I do have is, you know, when you do make these videos and you're putting them out there um, and, and you're getting to that next step, do you, do you find that people share it throughout their organization and you actually get more people actually bought in as an, like an account or opportunity? And they're like, wow, this is awesome. You find more people actually jumping on the first call? Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so speaking about that, uh, this happens actually pretty frequently and all the SDRs and BDRs were just like, hey, look at this, this has like 100 opens and like 30 clicks. And then you can obviously see where they're clicking from. So if you send a video to someone in San Francisco and it's being watched in London, like you know that they forwarded it around and uh, we're able to tell um, where those people are. And so what ha tends to happen is it'll delay for a little bit. And then when you follow up, they'll be like, yeah, like I forwarded around, everyone's super hyped. We're just discussing how to use this as a whole organization. So it pretty much brings everyone together. And what we've actually found as well is say if you reach out to a CMO or someone else, they'll actually forward it off to their SDRs and say, hey, this is like a really good email. Make sure you do this. And then they get bought in. And then the whole, com like, whole company com kind of comes around video as it is. Yeah. And I think the big thing here is like, um, what we've been finding, I was talking to one of our customers and, um, what they've been finding is when they go top, uh, bottom down, a bottom up approach with, uh, with prospecting. So trying to find like the managers and stuff. Like right. That. When the manager is trying to get buy-in from the C-suite or buy-in from their director, um, on whether or not they can sit down on a call to develop this tool, they no longer have to communicate what this tool does to their to their boss, right? That's a challenge, right? If you if you tell one of your customers like, hey, can you be a champion for me? You need to make sure they're educated and they know what to say and how to deliver that yeah. message. But now all you have to do is forward that video off to their director 
And our, this customer was finding that these directors would come in being like, hey, I received this from so-and-so. You know, I understand exactly what it is that you do. You know, here are the three reasons why we should meet or here are the three reasons why we shouldn't meet. And that's, that's powerful, right? Because now you don't really have to lean too heavily on, on your champion to, to have your, your message and understand what you do uh, down as solid as you do. Yeah, and that, that's, that's really cool. And uh, based on conversion rates, what have you guys seen be the most successful um, as subject lines? Yeah, like the big subject lines. So, we, so for inbound, uh, we actually don't do anything wildly different from a lot of other, uh, other companies because like inbound is inbound. And what I mean inbound, I mean like, it not just like a demo request or like a trial request, but anybody that's engaged with anything on Vidyard. Our, our goal, I'm almost afraid to say it because it's gonna it's gonna get used. But as a follow up, to the last two conferences we went to, we sent out like 300, 400 emails. The subject line "Thank you" had an 80 percent open rate. Like I could show the sales off that. That's that was so insane. insane, right? <laughs> uh, no, yeah, thank you. All lowercase is the most the best subject line for inbound. And then with the video inside for these conferences, we had like a 30 percent click through rate. So 30 percent of the people that were receiving this email and actually watch the video and um, and that's powerful information to know right um, so from an outbound perspective our go-to subject line and, and it's hard to say whether this will work in all industries I'll be honest but what we've been finding that works for marketers and the sales persona is first name comma I made you this personal video and that simple subject line gets people's attentions they're like what is a personal video why did they make this for me and we're seeing uh, we're seeing like a 50% open rate on that which we're pretty happy with yeah, I mean, that's that's better than most. <laughs> that's better than most. Um, so cool. Um, as we're winding down here, what, what do you, why, why video? Let's, let's talk about this again. So guys, if someone's coming to you and they're like, I, I don't like video, this makes no sense to me, what would be the, the sentence or the, the, the couple sentences you would say to them to be like, this is why you should do video and this is how it can help you increase SQOs and SQLs? You ready for the pitch? Why video, Mark? Why video? <laughs> so, Why? Video is the most engaging uh, medium on the internet. So there's over 3 billion videos on uh, Facebook. There's billions of videos being watched on YouTube every single day. This is a YouTube video. It's engaging and you're able to understand how effective someone's actually watching and engaging with your content. So knowing this information as sales individuals or marketers or for anyone in a company for that matter understands how you can help them and what they're interested in. So then you can actually tailor your messaging and being more effective with what you can help them with. And obviously using Viewdit or videos throughout your sales process makes you more human. And then you can actually have your conversation instead of saying, hey, I'm a robot, we should meet. But say, hey, I'm Mark Morgan, I'd love to have a conversation with you because of these reasons. So you're able to convey your message in much better way than simple like as simple words on a page or just over a phone call because body language is a huge thing and being able to show that you're human is also a huge thing that's changing the game as we know it right now love it anything to add terrence i think from a manager perspective what i like about video so beyond like sql sql like numbers are great and, and hitting your quota is fantastic right what I found was because people have to record these videos day in and day out um, as part of our process, like Mark said, at minimum 20 new videos a day, um, they're perfecting the pitch a lot quicker, right? Because they know that if I have to re-record this video three, four times, I'm not going to get through my tasks. So I have to lock down that pitch and make sure that I'm able to sound it off in one take. And that's been really powerful for the development of our team, especially for new reps. Like as part of, our, part of our onboarding, you have to send me like 10, 15 drafts of the same video. And like we, we will dive in and look at like body language, we'll look at messaging. But after practicing that and learning how to sound it off right away, I can be confident that when you get on the phone, you know what exactly to say. Um, and that's, that's, been, uh, that's been kind of like a side effect of uh, why, you should use, uh, why you should use video. Awesome, I love it. And guys, the final question here that I ask every single guest that comes on the on the Chronicles: What is the one piece of advice that you give to an SCR as they enter into their new role? Oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna give advice that I wish I got. Um, and maybe maybe I was like, maybe I was just way off in my expectations. But I I'd come from a different industry prior to prior to software sales, and I thought I was doing a really tough job at the time. 
um, and completely underestimated how challenging it is and how you, how hard this job can possibly be. So if I had one advice to anybody who's looking to get into the world of sales development or it's just starting off, you might be coming in with a hot month. I did. I had two to three hot months before I, I crashed and burned. And I think one of your first, your first episodes is about that steady mindset. Um, I think the big thing is just don't underestimate it. Like this is a tough gig. Sales is not easy, but it's incredibly rewarding. And as long as you, you know, you do what you need to do to keep yourself mentally sane, you will be successful. One thing that I would say, so coming out of school um, last May, almost one year, you are not going to be efficient or that effective to begin with. So one thing that I've noticed for the su uh, successful reps here is being the first ones in the office, being the last ones out of the office. So yeah. putting that time in, you're not going to be efficient or effective for a bit, but after a while, you're just going to become that much better every single hour, every single day, one more email, one more call, one more video. And this improves over the long term just because you, you have that much more practice. You're be better at what you do. So in the long term, you're able to increase your SQLs, increase your SQOs. And that's what we noticed here at our team is just putting that effort in. It's going gonna, it's gonna to suck for a long time, but you have to have that vision and that goal in the back of your head of what you want to be and where you want to be. And that's how you're going to get there. Awesome. Yep. I love it guys. Uh, and and to guys, I agree with you. I think kept, the reason why I did that for my first video is that you have to keep a steady mindset. If you're not, then you're going to be confused. You're going to be lost and the game is just going to basically bog you down. And then I do agree with you Mark, as well. You have to be able to come early and you have to be able to stay late. Um, in the beginning process because there's just so much to learn and you got to get ahead of the game. So um, thank you guys so much for coming on the Chronicles today. Valuable insight on video. I, I think a lot of people are going to start making videos now. So that's always a good thing. So um, as I always say, guys, keep dialing. And I'll see you guys soon. Thanks, Morgan. See ya.